Hello, fabulous friends, fans, and superstars. Welcome to your horoscope for the week of April 19, 2020. I am your astrologer, Nadia Shaw. Thank you for being here. Well, it is a powerful week, and the center of the power, one of the great centers of the power, has to do with the new moon. The new moon will take place right around Thursday and will be happening in the sign of Taurus. But this new moon is going to engage a larger configuration happening close in the sky to Uranus and speaking in a type of conversation that astrologers call a square with Saturn. Now it is this Uranus Saturn connection that I think is especially important and interesting. The energy of Taurus in and of itself, well, that brings a focus to finances. And financial security is something that I know a lot of people out there are thinking about right now, especially in light of all of the having to work from home, social isolation, and the uncertainty around our current world circumstances. And yet it is this particular configuration that isn't just about this moment, although it is, but it's bigger. It is also about what is coming up in 2021. 2020 does have rare and powerful alignments playing out, absolutely. But how it is that we implement them, how they actually change our lives in practical ways, it is going to be Uranus square Saturn in 2021 that is going to allow us to then implement these big global shifts that are taking place right now. It is going to make the future more real, but also the resistance to how much things can transform. It can be scary to see things change so very quickly like they have right now. And how it is that the very nature of work is transforming, the very nature of who we understand as an essential worker has transformed in our world culture right in front of our eyes. Now, what is that going to mean in a more practical sense? How is it that outside of clapping for people, which is a beautiful thing that people around the world do every evening for their healthcare workers, for example, but how is it that it moves beyond just uh, clapping and shows of support to actually something more tangible to support these people? Well, I do think we're gonna to start to see the first of that desire showing up around this new moon. That Taurian energy gives it a strong financial element, but societal change and the resistance to it, well, that is also gonna to start to show up around this new moon, but it's just the beginning. It is a brief window into energy that we will be more fully immersed in once we get into 2021. We have had Uranus moving through the sign of Taurus since 2018. At first in 2018, sort of dipping in and out, moving in more permanently once we entered into 2019. We're still in the early stages of a cycle that's gonna take us right to 2026. And it is during this time that our relationship to currency, to money, to value, understanding what's worth the value, what isn't, how we pay for things in a practical way, but also what's worth paying for is going to go through an evolution. It's going to leap into the future. And then you add, of course, Saturn, newly in the sign of the future. Now, both Saturn and Uranus are ruling planets of the sign of Aquarius. We are bringing more and more focus to this one particular energy. After spending a huge amount of time focused on Capricornian energy that we have not only been in since 2008 when Pluto stepped in here, but especially over the course of the last, oh, almost three years, as Saturn moved through the sign of Capricorn, and now as Jupiter is moving through the sign of Capricorn as well. Well, it is a moment like this that gives us a stepping out of energy that is more structured, that is more traditional, that is more about maintaining social structures and invites us to see things in a different way, in a new way, creating something new, not just in the immediacy and on an individual level, but certainly on a collective level as well, on a structural level as well. What does that look like? What is the resistance to that? How do we apply that? All of that 
we're going to get a little bit of a window into with this particular new moon. So whether it is new ways of addressing money that start to show up with this new moon and how that speaks in a larger sense that we start to glimpse, well, all of this becomes possible at this time. You know, the other interesting thing is it is often said that the teachings of the Buddha are so rooted in uh, Torian higher understanding. Buddha was a Taurus and we can see his chart online, right? He was a Taurus. He was born in the fourth month on the fourth day of the Chinese calendar, which puts him comfortably in the month of May, which makes him very comfortably uh, a Taurus. And it was uh, at this time that the spirituality of being present, of being in your incarnation, of being in breath, of being present with your breath and how powerful that is to help us to escape the cycle of suffering. One of the four noble truths of Buddhism is that life is suffering, but it is the teachings of the Buddha that free us from that endless cycle of incarnation of suffering. And where do we find that freedom? It is ultimately in the present moment. It is ultimately in breath itself that we find peace and that we find a sense of elevating beyond the cycle of suffering that to be a human being means that we will go through. And so we have on the one hand, Taurian energy being highlighted here, energy of presence, of being in your body, being with your breath, embracing the physical incarnation for all its worth, for all of its pleasures and its joys. One of the great pleasures is to be present with breath. And then we have these decidedly futuristic energies that are all air, all thought. Taurus is an earth sign, it is grounded. The very nature of Uranus is pure electricity, pure thought. Saturn, in the sign of Aquarius, its traditional rulership, brings forward the more scientific side of that planet. And so we have here energy that on the surface seems to not connect, not to have an integration. If you think about earth and air, they never really do connect with each other when we think about it on an elemental level. But then here we are with this new moon, with Taurus hosting Uranus, a planet of thought and air and electricity and brilliance of quick movement in a very slow moving, very grounded energy, working on very deep levels, but it is essentially thought and energy that is transforming Earth, that is transforming the practical. And then further Aquarian energy highlighted here, bringing us into the future, helping us to envision something more lofty, something more ideal. You know, it is also Aquarian energy that is sometimes called the sign of second childhood, because when we look at it from an archetypal perspective, Aquarius is energy that comes after Capricorn and Capricorn is uh, fulfillment. It is manifestation, it's accolades, it's success, right? It's what you've achieved in this highest sense. And normally once we move beyond Capricorn, we retire, right? And retirement for many people is a second youth. It is a chance to truly live the way that you want to live and to feel free. The energy of freedom is encapsulated here. You've done what it was that you were supposed to do. You achieved what it was that you set out to do, maybe other things. And it has happened. It has come to fruition. And now it's time to move on, uh, to think about things in new ways, to more loftier aims and joy as well. That is a part of the archetype of youth. And so we have this idea of fresh energy of second youth coming in after a period of time of dedication and of fulfillment as well. 
So how is that going to look like as we as humanity prepare to step into this new era of changed priorities? Prioritizing personal freedom and a sense of humanitarianism. And then how does that fit into our understanding of the resources we have, the money that we have, what we value? Now, when we look at values as well, I see values differently. Taurus is often a sign associated with values, but I feel like it is a much more immediate, practical understanding of values. And it shows up in our lives, right? I've uh, shared before this idea um, that was shared with me by one of my spiritual mentors who said that you can have this concept of what God is, but whatever you hold in your mind, that is your God. And where there's a disconnect, well, that's the learning opportunity there for you. And so it ultimately is by observing the thoughts we hold, like what is it that we truly nurture in our minds, that's going to show us what we worship. And so here we have this uh, brilliant Taurian energy that is all about holding, right? And it's so grounded, it's so methodical, it's so embodied. And then we have these higher ideals as well of Aquarius. But Taurus often associated with values. I feel like it represents that what we're holding in our mind, what we're manifesting, you know, what we spend our money on. That's what we value, what we give our energy to. That's what we value. And then we have like higher spiritual values. That's much more Sagittarian where it has to do with the ethics and the principles that guide our life. And then there's another side of it, not necessarily values, but the personal, mystical, spiritual experience that is very Piscean. And so when we talk about values, I do want to make that distinction. Our values as a collective, as a world culture, are going through dramatic changes with the Uranus moving through the sign of Taurus and our values in a more immediate way and what we're actually paying attention to, what we actually give ourselves to and our energy to, that is going through dramatic changes as well. This is one of the stronger moments of that. This new moon gives us a glimpse into how that evolution is happening and helping us to decide whether or not we like it. And if we don't like it, the great thing about glimpsing the future is that that gives us power to transform and to change it to make it better, to make it more loving, to make it more wise. And so this is a harbinger, if you will, a little bit of a foreshadowing, but as the future always is, it is not set in stone. And our intention to bring love and wisdom is a force of transformation that is just as powerful as any of the planets to shape not only the present, but certainly to change the future to make the future more wise and more loving for more people than ever before, and certainly for ourselves. There is also, at the end of the week, Pluto station. And Pluto is going to go retrograde at the very end of the week, but slowing right down to a standstill as we move through this week, just barely inching along in the sky and then holding tight before officially going retrograde. This week is a very Plutonian week. There is a lot of Pluto power available to us. Now, Pluto is an energy of profound transformation. It is digging in very deep within us and seeing what we find. Seeing all of it, all the murky things within our soul, within our psyche, and finding acceptance. Looking at what it is that ultimately we don't want to look at and healing it. And that's why I think of Pluto as so strongly associated with the shadow, the shadow that we project onto other people that we don't want to own. Well, Pluto retrograde allows that energy to become much more personal, to become much more inward driven, to become something that becomes more reflective. It allows us to consider how it is that we might own and therefore heal the shadow self as part of the process of what Carl Jung called individuation. 
And individuation is essentially the integration of the unconscious shadow self and the conscious self. Pluto retrograde gives us that opportunity to do the work that change requires. Sometimes it's very private work. It's very inward directing work. And sometimes that work is deeply challenging as we really are getting to the roots of what it is that is within us, how it got there and how we can choose better. Pluto retrograde in some ways allows us to bring forward the higher, more transformative, more evolved qualities of this energy. And again, it is us that chooses to engage it, to make it more personal. But I also want to say, you know, last week I spoke about the divine frustration that a lot of people are feeling right now and, and we've seen it, it's showing up that much more. And when I see a week like this, not only a new moon like this, where financial structures are transforming quickly and dramatically in a way that is scary for a lot of people, but we've also got this frustration underneath the surface. A frustration at systems and structures of power, a questioning of that. And it's healthy to question. I do believe that. But how that is felt, how that frustration is expressed, I feel like we've just seen the very beginning. Some of that frustration is going to become very notable with a week like this especially with Pluto slowing down to a standstill, especially with Pluto, especially close to the Earth. Whenever a planet is changing directions, it is closer to the Earth. Its energies are considered more intense and more magnified for us here on Earth. And so it is with this Plutonian vibe, where we get to glimpse what's really going on, as they say, behind the curtain or underneath the surface. and. A big part of the insight is what is going on within us. Whether that us is us as individuals, us as our psyche, but we share a psyche with others as well. We have a collective psyche that we participate in, a cultural psyche. Um, each country has its own psyche. And we are a part of that when we hold these different identities, when we are part of these different cultures and social locations as they're called. This is that very opportunity to dig deeper, to find our truth and to decide that the truth that is rooted in pain is no longer going to guide us, but the truth that is rooted in love and wisdom is going to be what is real and what will spur us forward. It is what is worth focusing on with the intensity that Pluto promises. We do have other things happening in the sky at this time as well. At the very beginning of the week, Mercury moving through the sign of Aries will speak in harmony with Mars moving through the sign of Aquarius in a type of conversation that astrologers call a sextile. I think that this is a lovely flirty energy it's wonderful for connecting with people online, that's for sure, uh, and having some memorable moments, fun moments, light moments, that is promised here with this energy. It is the same day that the sun will move into the sign of Taurus. So happy birthday to all the Taurians out there as they start their birthday month. However, as the sun steps into the sign of Taurus, we'll very quickly move on to perfect a connection with Saturn the type of connection that astrologers call a square. Now this happens right around Tuesday, but this is an energy of restriction, an energy of a reality check that may not necessarily feel so comfortable, an energy that asks for maturity and to trust a larger process. This is an energy that asks us what is worth sacrificing for, helping us to get honest about that and where it is that we are realizing that it's worth sacrificing for, we become that much more deeply committed in our resolve. It is at the end of the week that Mercury will speak with Pluto. Now that is a conversation of tension. That is a more difficult connection to be taking place. 
And that can make for very difficult conversations, but also with Mercury in the sign of Aries, Pluto station in the sky. I think this divine frustration I just spoke about at some length, that's really gonna show up as we get to the end of the week. Uh, Mercury, as I've mentioned before as well, is the media. It is a, a speaker, an archetype of the media. It's what we are talking about as a collective. And chances are there are going to be uh, some very passionate opinions expressed in the media that get a lot of attention um, and some very passionate demonstrations as well of people um, who are expressing their frustration. And it is so important with a sky like this and it is important as a general principle uh, to have compassion and to be as kind as possible. And I would say, regardless of if you feel that frustration or not, as we get to the end of the week, um, set the intention of kindness. It can be hard, but it can actually be really important at this time as well. What I love about this week for us, well, look, there's a lot here. The energy of Mercury is essentially flighty. So the energy I spoke of at the very beginning and very end of the week, it is very quick moving. It comes and it goes. But then we have these much larger energies that are evoking much larger trends coming up in the future. 2020 is a profound year. We are in once in a lifetime transits that are profoundly changing our relationship to ourselves, to a higher power, to the structures that hold our world and our societies together. It is a time like this where we are leaping into a new consciousness, but that happens with some growing pains. And some of those growing pains, well, that is showing up now. What is that future going to be? And what part of it do you want to participate in? And where is it that maybe you're glimpsing parts of the future that you think maybe are not rooted in love and wisdom? And what can you do about it? Well, it is going to be a week like this that begins to show us the way. Personal power is a big part of it and intention is a huge part of it as well. And where it is that we are committed to greater love and greater wisdom, we are truly unstoppable. What do you love about this week? Let me know in the comments below. I love reading you guys. And of course, if you want to know how all this wonderful stuff this week speaks to you and your sign, log on to NadiaShaw.com. Sign up to be one of my superstars. Superstars get expanded exclusive video scopes each and every week, unlimited access to special horoscopes and more. All of this in the superstar space. I look forward to meeting you there. And special horoscopes are up. The Saturn special horoscopes are in the superstar space. Venus retrograde special horoscopes for each and every sign are in the superstar space and also available for download on my website, NadiaShaw.com. Thank you so much for your trust to all the people who have purchased these uh, downloaded videos. Uh, your trust, it just means so much to me. Thank you and for the wonderful feedback as well. Now, I have a Venus Retrograde special horoscope video that is going to be published on YouTube. I'm sorry that there's been a little bit of a delay, but that should be coming up in the next few days. So be on the lookout for that. But if you just can't wait, if you want the preview horoscope for your sign, log on to my Instagram account and it is there that you'll be able to watch the preview horoscopes, one for each sign uh, in my main uh, feed there. Uh, on my Instagram page. I do have books, my books. I love my books. I'm so grateful for the inspiration, for writing these books, for the success that you've made my books. Thank you for that. Prayers to the Sky is the most recent book and The Body and the Cosmos as well as the book that came out last year. Uh, both of these books debuted as number one new releases on Amazon in New Age Astrology. Thank you so much for that. It does mean so much to me. And there are people who still do tag me on Instagram. They share how much my books and different passages mean to them. And that means so much to me as well. Thank you. And I would really appreciate your positive review on Amazon. And so please do uh, take a moment. If you are one of the many people who uh, have either one of these books, 
please do uh, leave a review on Amazon. It really does help so very much. The Universe is Wise and Loving is my next book. Thank you to everybody who ordered an advanced copy, which comes with over $200 worth of free gifts. And The Universe is Wise and Loving will be widely available, even though the advanced copies will go out much sooner. The uh, copies on Amazon and wherever books are sold, that is coming August 22nd, so a little bit later on this year. And you may already know, Astrology Realized, it's still a really great seller. Thank you so much for your trust and your love in what it is that I have to share. And thank you for enjoying my books. I've got lots of live events coming up. Well, they're all online events, of course, with the world moving online, at least for now. And Synchronicity University is well underway. Earlier today, uh, we had Introduction to Numerology. It uh, had a lot of last minute signups. Thank you so much to everybody who joined. It was such a fun class to have. Uh, as part of the spring session coming up, there is going to be a class on Chiron in aspect to planets and chart points. And then we'll have Venus in aspect. And then we will have Mars through the signs and houses in the astrology chart. So there's lots more fun to be had, lots more learning to be had uh, as part of the spring session of Synchronicity University. I look forward to meeting you online. Other amazing online events. Well, tomorrow on Sunday, there's a free event taking place. It's a preview of the huge online party that is planned, astrologyrisingcostarica.com. If you go to that site, you can sign up. It'll be so much fun to join you online. I think that 500 people or 1,000 people are allowed in the Zoom room, and then the overflow is going to be uh, streamed to YouTube. Like, literally, there are so many people who've signed up. So it's going to be an online party. We're going to have a lot of fun together. And each one of the incredible speakers is going to be there. They're going to be sharing little mini lessons of the different things that we're going to be teaching online. I have four classes plus a dinner party that I am going to be hosting as part of this online party. Uh, and I look forward to meeting you for this free event that is going to be happening coming up very soon, coming up tomorrow, Sunday. Maybe you're watching this after the fact, I don't know, but if you're watching this beforehand, uh, you can join us and links are in the description below. It's astrologyrisingcostarica.com. And my other big event is Norwak. Norwak is now online. Again, world-class, incredible speakers will be joining us, some of the most brilliant minds in astrology today. There'll be several simultaneous rooms going on. And if you register for Norwak, uh, you will also get a full two-week access to all the recordings of all the classes. If you went in person, you could only take like one class at a time. And normally there's like five or four tracks that go on simultaneously. This way you get to take advantage of all the classes it's included. So it's a really, really uh, wonderful, not only deal, but also for those who are students of astrology, such a joy to participate in. So also for that, you can learn more by clicking on the description below. Other events I'm having that have moved online, including my talk uh, with Astrology Toronto, my talk with the NCGR uh, Stargazers group, all of that, links below. And finally, you could get insight into what I think of your chart um, because I have a wonderful partnership with Cosmogram and this really was a labor of love. I wrote out all the different possible combinations that can be there as part of uh, doing a natal chart reading. And so you go onto the Cosmogram website, you insert your numbers, your data, and you get emailed to you a PDF of your chart in this PDF of the different aspects in your chart and what they mean and you know what your sun in the sign it's in and what house it's in and how it's aspecting other planets, what it all means. It's all there on this page, electronically delivered, yes, but it's right there. And to me, that's very exciting. The very, very first printed, computer-generated uh, reading that I ever had done was way back in the day, back in the 90s. And that was a mind-blowing experience to me. It changed my life, literally changed my life, to feel like I was reading myself uh, on page. 
and it made me say, I want to learn more. And now to be able to offer that, my interpretations of your sky, to offer that to other people, that is really phenomenal to me. I still have that original report actually in a box in my parents' house, so I cherish it that much. My hope is that as you get this generated reading, you cherish it as well. So links in the description below and thank you. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for your trust. Thank you for your love. I'm so very grateful for it. Um, thank you for seeing me as some part of your sacred journey. And until we connect again, take care. It'll be a great week. Enjoy.